breaking. This is the Channel 2 Action News Night Beat. Coverage you can count on. Firefighters say that couple is fortunate to have escaped minutes after lightning struck their home. Good evening. I'm Sophia Choi in tonight for Wendy Corona. I'm Justin Farmer, and the couple is staying with family tonight after a bolt of lightning caused damage to the place they have called home for 25 years. Channel 2's Ricky Klaus live in Cherokee County. And Ricky, this isn't the only weather-related call firefighters had to deal with tonight. Firefighters tell me there was a bad storm. Lots of lightning rolled through, and within the span of about five minutes, they got three separate house fire calls. One was much worse than the others. A family is displaced Sunday night after their home on Windridge Drive in Cherokee County caught fire while they were inside. Firefighters believe, preliminarily, lightning is to blame. We responded and found the house with about 70% involvement on our arrival. I spoke with the homeowners off camera about their experience inside their home of 25 years near Ackworth. Around 5.30 Sunday evening, they tell me they'd just gotten home when they heard a loud crack, went outside and saw flames shooting through the roof. Very fortunate to get out. Cherokee County Fire Captain Jeff Adamack is thankful the homeowners, Sandra and John Kennedy, got out on their own. He did go back in for some, some of his valuables, but his family convinced him not to go back in anymore. Investigators were looking into the cause of the fire when we got there. Sandra told me she's in shock. John says they're staying with family for the time being, and they do have insurance. The other two house fire calls I mentioned earlier related to lightning turned out to be nothing but some smoke. We drove by both of those homes, and there was no sign of distress. Reporting live in Cherokee County, Ricky Klaus, Channel 2 Action News, Night Beat. Now we're in a pattern, aren't we? As we have another chance for those kinds of storms tomorrow, meteorologist Katie Walls forecasting any timing ahead in our next 10 minutes. And before you head out to work or school, yes, school getting started with thousands tomorrow, download our free Severe Weather Team 2 app. You'll be able to track those pop-up thunderstorms all the way down to your particular street. Search WSB TV in the App Store. New at 11, a candlelight vigil in memory of an innocent bystander gunned down at a bus stop. 35-year-old Don Terry Newell was hit by a hail of gunfire on June 23rd on Glenwood Road in DeKalb County. Detectives say someone fired dozens of shots from a car, killing the father of three. Tonight, friends and family begged the killer to come forward. So hopefully they'll feel our pain, feel our grief, and somebody have the heart to say what happened. Now, if you have any information, please call Crime Stoppers at 404-577-TIPS. That's 404-577-8477. Jury selection is scheduled to begin tomorrow in the murder retrial of Hemi Newman. A jury found Newman guilty but mentally ill of killing Russell Snyderman outside of Dunwoody Daycare in 2010. But last year, the Georgia Supreme Court ordered a new trial because confidential mental health notes were allowed into evidence. We will have live reports from the DeKalb County Courthouse tomorrow, beginning on Channel 2 Action News at 4. Tomorrow, President Barack Obama will be in downtown Atlanta talking about Veterans Affairs Reform. And today, officials announced that it will be opening up a crisis center soon. Channel 2's Matt Johnson, live at the High Regency Hotel, where the president is set to speak tomorrow. Tomorrow afternoon, President Obama will give a speech to veterans right down these stairs. It's happening in the afternoon, but a lot of veterans tell me they're going to be here bright and early to try to get into that speech. But some veterans say they've heard the speech before and they want real change coming from the top. In front of a crowd of disabled veterans, Senator Johnny Isaacson said just two weeks ago, a troubled veteran called his office and one of his staffers answered the call. And he was at risk for taking his life and she talked him into kind of getting help rather than taking his life. Isaacson knows a better system across the country is needed to cut down on veteran suicides. At the National Convention of Disabled American Veterans in downtown Atlanta, he praised a mental health crisis center that's set to open in Atlanta this year. With all the facilities that we have, there is a plethora of talent in Atlanta, so it's a great place to take something like this and find 270 people to you know, deliver the service. Secretary of Veterans Affairs Bob McDonald says it would be just the second one in the country and it'd be staffed by mental health professionals. These people save lives every single day. President Obama is scheduled to speak at the conference Monday afternoon. 
Loretha Colbert is a military spouse who lives in College Park and says she's eager to see him discuss VA reforms. I think he's done an excellent job for the veteran. He's given a lot of support and a lot implemented a lot of programs to move forward for the vets. But Tim Kelly served with the Marines in Vietnam and says though he voted for Obama, he's disappointed with the care his fellow veterans have received. I actually like listening to him, but he doesn't produce. And as for that Atlanta Crisis Center, the secretary of the VA says its exact cost and location are still being worked out, but he says it should generate $25 million for the local economy. Live in downtown Atlanta, Matt Johnson, Channel 2 Action News, Night Beat. And coming off the DNC, it's going to be quite the event tomorrow, Matt, and as we have more details on the president's private fundraiser for Hillary Clinton here tomorrow. Our partners at the Atlanta Journal-Constitution obtained an invitation that says President Obama is the special guest at the home of Andy Prozis and Lori Heere. The required donation of $33,400 also gets an attendee a picture with President Obama. For more details on this visit, go to our Facebook page. Hillary Clinton's campaign is disputing Donald Trump's claim that Democrats rigged the presidential debate schedule so that two of the three debates would air during NFL games, and one of those games involves the Atlanta Falcons. Trump claims Clinton prefers smaller TV audiences watching her debate. Trump's campaign plans to discuss concerns with the commission of the presidential debates. The commission also rejects the Trump claims, saying the debates in September and October were announced nearly a year ago. Tonight, thousands of students in several metro Atlanta counties are getting ready to head back to the classroom tomorrow, but some teachers are going with specialized training they never worried about before. Never thought that going into the teaching career, I'd have to do a training like this. Going out this month, Cobb County teachers spent time in the classroom learning how to respond to an active shooter. Marietta Police laid out the important things every teacher should look for in their classroom to delay a shooter's action, including tools many can find right there in the classroom. And those items and plan are part of our live back-to-school coverage tomorrow on Channel Traction News this morning, starting at 4.30 a.m. Join us for triple team traffic and two choppers to get you through the morning commute. Also, team coverage and severe weather center, too. New at 11, a television reality star from Atlanta is mourning the deaths of her two brothers shot and killed in New Orleans today. Toya Wright shared this tweet saying, help me, Lord, I'll never understand this. She also posted a photo on Instagram with one hashtag that said, RIP to my brothers. New Orleans police say officers found two bodies in a vehicle but did not identify the victims. New developments, police tonight identified the man shot to death in his car off Six Flags Drive as 42-year-old Larry Grisby. They do not know who shot him or why. Neighbors stopped by a small memorial to the man set up near the scene and prayed for him. Talk to God and um, talk to the guy and told him that my heart goes out to his kids and his family. Police say Grisby's two children were also in the car when he was shot this morning, but they were not hurt. Happening now, flash flood rescues just outside of Baltimore, Maryland. Take a look at this video. You can see a chain of people working to rescue a woman from a car. And look here. These images actually show the destruction after heavy rain and fast-moving water tore down streets and into buildings. Tonight, the flood threat not over. Deadly flash floods ripped through this Maryland town, killing two people. The rushing water threatened to sweep this driver away. One man was knocked down trying to help her. Moments later, a human chain forms as the woman crawls out of her car, finally pulled to safety. There's people in the water. Other drivers desperately cling to cars swept away by water. Main Street in historic Ellicott City turned into a river. The aftermath, cars stacked on top of each other. This SUV flipped nose first into a canal. Came here, I thought we were going to have dinner within five minutes. It was panic and my friend was pulling someone out of there and I've never seen anything like it. We've got second floors collapsed into the foundation, sidewalks and roadways that were completely washed away. Incredible pictures right there. It's estimated this flood will cost hundreds of millions of dollars. Officials say they will begin accepting donations through the Red Cross beginning tomorrow. Happening now, the mother of a missing Hall County girl is making a passionate plea for the child's return. An Amber Alert was issued Wednesday for Brooklyn Smith. Investigators believe that she was taken by her father, Stephen Spires, and that she is in danger. But her mother says Brooklyn called from a blocked number Saturday and said she was all right. I can't imagine that at some point someone's not going to see them. 
The mother told us she wrote a note to Brooklyn saying none of this is her fault. She added, you will be surrounded by love when you come home. Today, we got the mugshot of a woman police say stabbed her boyfriend to death. 50-year-old Sandy Reed is facing murder and aggravated assault charges. Police responded to the Harmony Plaza apartments on Myrtle Drive in Southwest Atlanta Saturday. They say Reed killed her live-in boyfriend. Investigators identified him as 55-year-old Norris Lumpkin. And a look at our storm tracker 2HD. We are still tracking some of these isolated showers as they clear out of North Georgia. Coming up, I'll pinpoint the timing for more storms tomorrow. A local church targeted by thieves. How the crime will prevent church leaders from helping others. Plus, a new travel alert. The concern about the Zika virus right here in the U.S. Closed captioning is brought to you by Mark Spain Real Estate. Your home sold, guaranteed. MarkSpain.com.